I'm Wade Davis with the Coalition of Historical Trekkers here at historic Fort Atkinson near Fort Calhoun, Nebraska. We've had a lot of requests about trekking packs and what goes into a trekking pack and what you take along on a trek. And I thought I'd go through mine. Uh, this is not the end-all be-all, but I've been doing this for about 30 years, so I've got some insight into it. Uh, I think trekking begins with the clothing on your back. That's part of your equipment. And I am dressed as a French trapper from about the year 1825. And of course I am wearing a breech cloth, buckskin leggings, or brain tan buckskin leggings, a French cotton shirt, a wool coat, and just a broad brim hat. I also have a wool vest right here that I bring along regardless of whether it's summer, spring, or fall. With the two layers of wool, I can take off or add to to preserve my temperature. Even though today it's about 80 degrees, an unlined wool coat breathes and is comfortable to wear. But if you put a lined vest underneath, it adds that much more layer of insulation to your core body temperature and maintains it. So if you think of clothing and your pack as one unit, you'll be better. I know you can get hypothermia in the low 60s if the wind's blowing and you get wet. So you need to think about that when you're out on a trek, in the woods, on your own hook, where it's far from rescue and far from civilization. So this is my basic pack right here. It weighs about 25 pounds. I use different packs for different time periods. For this time period, 1820s, I used the new invented knapsack haversack. I made this myself from plans in a book. I stitched it up. It's relatively simple. They were used during the Rev War. They were used during the War of 1812. And Lewis and Clark, uh, Sergeant Gass's journal, shows that they used them on the Lewis and Clark expedition. So they're quite handy. They take the place of a knapsack and a haversack and you can carry everything in it that you need for a trek to go for about three or four days. So I'll open it up. Of course it slings over the shoulder like so. And like I said at 25 pounds it's not a burden. You can carry your musket, have your canteen and your other shooting bag and accoutrements on and everything rides high and stays out of the way. So if you take it off and we flop it on the ground, the billy cup here on my strap represents my sole cookware when I'm on the trail. Uh, I either boil porridge or a little soup and if I have meat then I cook it over the fire on a green stick. So you minimize cookware when you carry just a billy cup. I also make my coffee in that and I have a tin cup in my side pouch that I would use to drink out of out of that. Also if you're in an area where there's a water restriction you can boil up a couple of uh, tins of water, put them in your canteen and let them cool overnight. So anyway here's what's inside my pack. We'll flop it open. It has two pockets. It has this big bottom pocket and then an upper pocket that's kind of sleeved. It first is my ground cloth. This is hand sewn. Uh, it's made with the red ochre and uh, water-based pigment and paint so it is waterproof. This one's about 20 years old and it's done really well. I periodically reseal it. And then I have an old blanket which is a French style blanket, a Lachine blanket. And that's all I carry in the way of bedding. Uh, like I said, I carry a wool vest and a wool coat regardless of the weather. That way at night, the ground is an incredible heat sink. So if you're hot, you can lay on the tarp, cover up with the blanket, and the ground will take the heat away from your body if you're very warm on a night when it doesn't cool down. If it's a night where it cools down, I use the blanket doubled over like a burrito and I sleep on one layer and have one layer over me. If it's going to be even colder, then I add the vest and the coat and sleep in those. Uh, I think it's important to sleep in your clothing in case something happens in the middle of the night, you can get up and move. So let's look at what's inside my main compartment. I have a big fire starting kit. This is all tinder. Two of the main things on the trail are to make yourself a fire in the event of an emergency situation and to keep warm in the event of a downpour or rain. Uh, 
So I have a lot of punk wood, a lot of tinder, a lot of sap wood, uh, just a lot of dried sticks and grass and stuff in here, wrapped up, same material as the tarp, a waterproof sock where I can start a fire. I have a ditty bag or a war bag in here, a veg tan leather bag that snaps shut. Inside it are my essential materials. I have a journal and a pencil. I have an additional fire starting kit, uh, flint and steel with some tinder and stuff in there. And I have my repair kit, which is a sewing kit, scissors, seam ripper, uh, needle and thread. And uh, I also have a pair of handmade blacksmith pliers and a file in here. Then I also have uh, my toothbrush and comb, which you use on the trail. And I have got, let's see what else is in here, uh, a mirror to inspect yourself, another fire steel, some obsidian that I picked up out west, and there's my pencil. So just odds and ends are in there that I may need or use. I also have here at Fort Atkinson, Chris Hageman, the tinsmith, made me this little portable candle lantern, which slings out and you put a candle in it. When I start a fire, I get a candle out, and I start the fire, and then I go and light a candle immediately. Because oftentimes, if the wood is a little wet or it's a little green that you've gathered, the flame will go out. So at least I have flame on a candle that I can relight with. The other thing that I have in this sack is my food bag. This is all the food that I will need to go for about four days. I have a bag of about 10 or 12 ounces of jerky. I have some raisins in a bag. And I have two bags of porridge that I can cook over a fire. And I have a bag of coffee beans. I also have a little bit of sweetener to go in the coffee or in the porridge and a salt horn for salt. And that's it. I really don't eat a lot on the trail. I try to eat a meal, maybe two a day in the morning and then maybe a little snack of jerky and some coffee at night. In the other half of the pack, I've got rope and cordage. I've got a, a pair of uh, a sleeping cap, a red toque in case it gets cool at night. And I've got, most importantly, a pair of wool socks. Now I wear, when I trek, thin-soled center seam moccasins, or if I'm unsure of the surface, I go barefoot a lot. I've tried shoes, but period shoes have slick soles and you'll fall down, and I have fallen down a lot. I go barefoot a lot to toughen my feet, and then at night, if it's cold, I put the socks on. Wool socks, you can Google rag wool socks on Amazon and find a pair just like this. They're authentic. And that's about it. If the weather turns bad, uh, I either sleep in a rock overhang or build a debris shelter or go with some other type of covering. And uh, for the most part, I sleep out in the open, use my pack as a pillow, and cover up with that blanket. And that about does it. So in the comments below, please put your comments on what you take with your trekking gear or what you think of this trekking gear, and we'll get a little dialogue going. Again, I'm Wade Davis with the Coalition of Historical Trekkers, and we'll see you out on the trail.